Hello, beautiful souls. Thank you for joining me today. This is another showcase of a Sophia Dragon Tribe, Divine Feminine Ascendant Master, and one of my absolute most favorite, closest, work with her all the time, can't say enough good things about her, Kuan Yin. Now, I have mentioned before, Kuan Yin was a walk-in for me a couple years ago, and she's been with me ever since. Her energy is really loving, nurturing, and compassionate. And I needed it in ways I couldn't even fathom at the time. I ended up being able to access a lot of information in regarding the quantum healing that I do. That was very important. But the other pieces of it was the compassion, the infinite compassion. It allowed me to grow out of the matrix judgment that I really did way too much of before I did the shadow work associated with that. Let me read to you her key code six um, introduction. She's known as she of a thousand waters. When you practice holding yourself with great tenderness, you eventually become whole in your relationship with yourself. You trust yourself. It is from the foundation that Karuna can then initiate you into the greater depths of compassion available to you as a Christed being. The definition of Karuna, loosely translated, is that you are so compassionate and loving to your inner child, to yourself, that your inner child then doesn't feel any separation and feels supported and stepping forward in your I am presence. <clears throat> Loving yourself with compassion is essential for ascension. And it is taught in a way that you see compassion develop out of pain. I'm going to give you the trigger warning for this video. I have a lot more information than I'm going to share about Huan Yin's story, more than the other Ascendant Masters. So this is going to probably be a bit of a longer video, but it's necessary. And it came through in a message from Kuan Yin. Basically, the gist is that the message de delivered conveying her her experiences as a human, a human little girl. It's so profoundly needed in the collective because it really encompasses what so many souls have been traumatized by and in a, in a similar way wounded and have the need to heal and have the need to develop their own soul growth, shadow work practices so that they too can get beyond the pain and find their way to compassion. And so the topics that we're going to cover today are, um, are not to be taken lightly and with a lot of love and a lot of reverence and respect. So without any further ado, let's get into it. This is by and large, most of the information from the Sophia Code written by Kaya Ra. I recommend you pick it up in whatever format you prefer and, um, you know, really get to know these Ascendant Masters. They really do offer us the exact guidance we need. And like I said before, um, I've read it cover to cover a few times and I use it now as a resource um, countless times, but in doing so, I see different meanings of the same passage that I've read before. You know, it depends on where I am in my journey, where I am in the day, where I am in the energies. Um, it's just, I can't say enough good things about it. It is, um, it is my pleasure to introduce you to it if you have never heard of it before. And Kuan Yin's um, 
key code, which is key code six. It's one that I really wasn't familiar with her story as a human. I didn't hear about her much. And uh, what I, I thought I knew was inaccurate. And so um, the growth and the revelations that came from um, her walk-in have been transformative in my life. And so I give her so much gratitude and love. This is all from Kuan Yin. Loving yourself with compassion is essential for ascension. My Sophia embodiment title is She of a Thousand Waters. For my transmission overflows with the light of Sophia carried within water. My key code activates the holy properties of water. <clears throat> my divine feminine Christ teachings are a spring source of Sophia's fluid wisdom, baptizing your awareness to let go and receive the abundant flow of divine love and compassion that is always available to you. The awareness of several rays of light activated when I am invoked as a mentor, all to increase your awareness to give and receive self-love and self-compassion. The first is the rose quartz ray of divine mother's love. The second is the gentle white light that pierces all darkness. And the third is the aquamarine way, ray of rebirth, courage, and divine service. I broadcast the quantum energy of these rays through the light within water, which carries the ferocity of my compassion in a gentle mist that soothes your body, your heart, and your mind. <clears throat> in your human journey, of self-mastery, there is only so much that you can let go of. When you feel drawn to my presence as a mentor, this is a sign that you are ready to heal your relationship with suffering. The rays of Sophia light carried within my water teachings offer a safe sanctuary for you to honor and let go of your greatest wounds, fears, and insecurities. You came to experience the sovereign power of your divinity through the vulnerability of your human experience, your willingness to be vulnerable, especially to painful experiences that stimulate personal growth deserves your utmost self-respect and self-compassion and unconditional love. I teach you how to soothe your experiences of vulnerability with patience and to refrain from pressuring yourself to prematurely move beyond unresolved pain. And I'm going to pause there for a minute. I see that a lot. Um, I call it the magic wand effect. There's a lot, there's, there's a percentage of people that are just like, tell me what I need to do and I'll do it. But they view it as a checklist that they can just go, okay, I said the words, I did the thing, I'm done. But they're not feeling it. They're not processing it. They're not really um, releasing that energy from them. And so it's a superficial attempt at best. And at worst, it's it's bypassing the shadow work that needs to be done. And you sell yourself short. And that's what she's getting to there. I'm going to read that again. I teach you how to soothe your experiences of vulnerability with patience and to refrain from pressuring yourself to prematurely move beyond unresolved pain. The imbalance, <clears throat> the imbalanced mental strategy to banish or hide away pain to be dealt with at some unknown future juncture has never worked and nor will it. It's how pain layers itself within your being that by the time you, you know, in my case, 30 years down the road, I had to go so far back to deal with um, the initial source of the pain and then all the things that subsequently happened because I did rush myself beyond um, the experience and I didn't truly heal from it the way I should have. When you're authentically present in your healing journey, the inner child innocence will assert itself when it feels acknowledged and safe enough to release the suffering that no longer serves you. 
<clears throat> the next golden age cycle will be launched by divine feminine leaders who radically embody the wisdom from their own authentic healing journeys through the necessary stages of grief. Each stage requires a being recovering from loss, trauma, and suffering. Call upon me, Quan Yin, as a mentor if your divine purpose is to lead others by embodying your own radical self-compassion. Loving yourself includes the compassion of forgiving yourself for the traumas, your past, both in this lifetime and in others. I became a mentor for embodying compassion from my own journey of reconciliation <clears throat> following devastating events that changed the course of my life forever. Just as green Tara traveled to earth from Sirius, I also came to earth with most of my ascension training completed in the star systems known as the Pleiades. <clears throat> However, I spent a single yet dramatic lifetime on earth. I chose to begin my final lifetime with complete amnesia from past lifetimes and fully committed to the vulnerability that my human experience would offer me for the accelerated growth of my soul. And another way to say that is she chose through her soul contract to literally jam pack so many events that would afford her the final pieces of growth that she would need. Many legendary stories about my origin have been told, but the truth is simpler than most. My humble beginnings invited <clears throat> invites humanity to meet me heart to heart. The purpose of my sharing is to offer my deep understanding of your vulnerable human journey and the willingness that is required to embody self-love and self-compassion. So here's the trigger warning. Here's your last chance. If you don't feel like you can hear a traumatic story today, I suggest you pause it or maybe just read the transcript. But the information is so healing at the end of the day. Um, maybe you can work your way through it. Kuan Yin. When I was born in Sophia's heart womb, my oversoul launched a sound wave that momentarily deafened the eyes and ears of lightning. Filling the heavens with not the announcement of my birth, my grateful tears feel, filled the whole universe with showers of fresh rain. My many previous lifetimes prepared me for my human earth girl experience. I chose a family and a community that lived in Northern Asia and was born as a girl named Yashinani. My modest family lived in a lush jungle forest near the mountains. I was content with simplicity and beauty of nature as my wealth. As a member of the family and the youngest daughter, I was happy to remain with my parents and provide for their well-being. I pleaded with my parents to send me to serve as a Taos nun in the convent, so an early marriage at age 14 was not in my future. I desired uninterrupted peace with myself. I was persecuted with beatings by my father to keep my mouth shut days prior to my 13th birthday our village was invaded by a legendary pack of mongol raiders they ritually drank human blood our homes were burned for sport children carried away parents were murdered before their very eyes i was brutally raped and beaten and left to die in a pool of my own blood. Although my eyes were swollen, I saw a flash of spinning diamond light <clears throat> light up the mountain ridge up a distance. My gaze fixed 
on the unknown eyes of this angelic looking man, urging me to flee. When I attempted to move, I passed out. I awoke several hours later to the crack of lightning and thunder. Cold rain began to pour over my village, and I heard the same firm voice speak to me from an unknown place within. Walk to the jungle now and do not delay. I left all that I ever knew behind me, my consciousness fractured and split far off beyond the boundaries of sanity. Living off of wild roots and herbs, I became a feral ghost and burrowed deep within the forest of my grief. I could not any longer sense my skin, whether burned, bleeding, or frozen, I did not feel. Somehow, I survived to 17 years old. As an orphan, contaminated victim of rape, my heart broke into a thousand pieces. My consciousness dissolved into a black hole of self-hatred. Consumed by grief, it was a mere thread of connection to my body that kept me alive. I was about to end my life when a luminous figure appeared. He did not blink or breathe, yet I knew he was alive, and I heard a kind voice in my head say, be at peace. I despised the message. I growled. He stayed 20 feet away from me at all times for many days. He quickly and quietly shared with me. He was a teacher, but more importantly, to think of him as a friend. His voice was the first human voice I had heard in years. The sound of his voice brought tears to my eyes. He assured me he would never touch me or harm me in any way. He would always be a loving guardian for me. This man showed me and my disassociated state of consciousness his life force, his energy. The radiant light body looked like a golden dragon. His chi flowed as water, <clears throat> piling high in waves around him. Somehow I knew this man was a light master in human form for my own benefit. For a fleeting moment, I felt just his presence was healing me. And as soon as I had the thought, the demonic memories of my past return, dragging me back into the black hole of my heart. So this beautiful man sat in meditation for days, weeks, months, and turned into years in prayerful meditation for me. I knew he would never leave me. The only time he moved was when Sophia guided him to get me food, garments, or a water blessing. In my devastating vulnerability, I was humbled beyond comprehension. All within me needed patience, care, attention, and repair. As I slowly learned how to relent, and ask for help. Each day, a new strength grew within me. Although I did not feel worthy of his unconditional love, I knew there was nowhere else to go. Day after day, he taught me by the waterfall, used the water to heal my wounds, both seen and unseen. We practiced praying over the water and then drinking the answers to those prayers every day and watched my body rapidly heal. He taught me of the divine mother embodiment named Tara. Using Tara's incantations of evo invoking my inner savioress to carry me across the sea of my suffering. He always honored my divine feminine side. It was remarkable to feel this after living most of my life subjected 
to patriarchal punishment. Tara appeared to me in the inner planes, often once she appeared in her white form, and asked me to dedicate myself to the embodying mantra of compassion. Om Mani Padme Um. To my surprise, one autumn afternoon, I turned to this man meditating by my side as we had been for many months and spontaneously told him my name was now Kuan Yin. He smiled peacefully and nodded and said, on behalf of creation, we thank you for accepting your embodiment of compassion. Many will save themselves by calling on your transmission of your name. I encourage you to become familiar with Kuan Yin and her transmission in the Sophia Code. I think I've said this before, but had I not read the Sophia Code cover to cover, a lot of people don't read books that way. If I just was drawn to one being, one transmission, one key code, one piece of wisdom, it would be Kuan Yin's. Kuan Yin walked in and never left me. Long before I realized she was the same soul as my soul mother. It's my soul mother and my soul father that is depicted in this story. They went through that together. Her healing sessions that she has cultivated with me are on different body systems, chakra systems, the heart, inner child healing, and they are profound. When she connects with you, she stays with you as long as you need her. And anytime you want to connect with her again, she's right back with you. Kuan Yin, we are all love. Suffering souls wound other souls until healed. Light of grace is infinite. Karuna compassion, healing the inner child. Love, forgiveness, and gratitude for yourself and for others. I asked Kuan Yin for a message about this video for, for the collective, for maybe those that are wondering why I had to speak about the ugly things. I wasn't planning on it, but when I started to develop the content, there's any number of things I could have talked about in reference to Kuan Yin, but for me, I do see a parallel with the traumas that she faced and the overreaching trauma of our world. Not just for women and children, but the effects go far beyond that. So in an effort to turn our pain into purpose, this was Kuan Yin's message to me today. Lucy, I know you felt compelled to share my incarnated earthly trauma story because this is the overwhelming trauma that has wounded so many souls on your earth the healing and letting go opens doors to the soul that allows the infinite light of source creator and mother sophia to shine out of your soul to the world heal the world by healing yourself first if you resonate with this story or anything about Kuan Yin or any of the other Sophia Dragon Tribe, Divine Feminine Ascendant Masters, please stop by violetlotusenergy.com and check out our services. If you have not already had your QET session, that is what clears out your energy field and makes you a candidate for the other sessions. You have to be clear to get the other things. They, they just won't work that way. Um, Kuan Yin session is there. You can read all about the inner child healing. She works with us for the chakra reset and recharge. Um, many other things she called, she's called in to assist with, but please check it out and see if there's something there that interests you that really resonates in your soul. 
And I beg you, do not stay suffering. Do not stay waiting in that sea of suffering. Make your way to the edge. Find your way up to the light. Lift your vision from from the, the depression that tends to envelop us so quickly when we go through something painful and realize why you're here. What is your purpose? Let's heal your soul so that you can regain your footing for your purpose, for your mission, and move forward with that. Thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.